Moment of truth. Man, I hope this works. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So I say welcome back to the channel, whereas I normally say welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage. Well, we're not gonna be working in the garage tonight. I know you would expect the next episode, if you will, to be putting on our freshly cut up and painted bed on our race truck project. This truck bed, the one we cut up, remember? But if you haven't noticed, I haven't posted up in a couple days because we have some domestic issues here at the house. So as you can see behind me, uh, we got a whole little operation going on here. Well, I came home from the hunting camp on Sunday, um, screwed around outside for a little while, put all my stuff away. Finally, right before bed, I got a shower. I noticed the water pressure was dying off. So eh, I'll take care of that tomorrow. Figured, hey, it's just a filter or something. So I came home from work, changed the filter. You know, still nothing. Check the contacts, check the breaker. Nothing was tripped. The contacts were contacting. They were doing what they were supposed to. It was calling for water, but we had no water anywhere. So came out here to the well pump, and I had voltage, but no water. So we're currently in the process. If I can get this bucket off of here. Currently in the process of pulling out the well pump. Now... It's not something I've ever done before, and I figured it's not that big a deal. Checked out a couple YouTube videos. All right, not a problem. Made a T-handle up, started pulled out, couldn't get it out. Then I noticed the cap. Well depth, 500. So I can only assume that that means that the well is 500 foot deep. Now you might be thinking, Tom, why don't you just pay somebody to have them come out and do it? You know, bada bing, bada boom. Well fortunately or un well it's unfortunate at the time but my neighbor and i share the beginning part of our driveway he decided to get it paved monday morning so i wasn't allowed on it for two to three days which meant, meant getting someone in here to take care of this or at least pull it for me was kind of out of the question but it is a very nice paved job i will say so myself but as you can see I chose not to, uh, I got other shit we need first. And that happened yesterday morning. So it got paved. I'm actually driving Caitlin through the cornfield or through the path next to the cornfield in order to get it to the house. Well, there she sits. Last night, um, it rained a substantial bit. As you can see, my path coming out this morning, it was rather wet. I'm lucky I made it out with these tires that I got on the truck. They're certainly not the most aggressive. They're definitely just a street tire, um, kind of comparable to your Nitto 420s. But needless to say, I don't think Caitlin's getting any further to the house until the, the driveway is accessible again. So it's just kind of unfortunate, the timing of the whole thing. Otherwise, after I found out how long, how deep it was, I would have you know just had somebody come out and take care of it for me but i figured out well, i'm probably gonna have a couple days i might as well do it myself and that's where the fun began i put the t-handle on it there is a pitless fitting they call it basically it's like a shoe that slides in a little thing um anyway i tried to pull that out i couldn't get it out i could start wailing on it with a hammer my t-bar and a maul And the T-bar ended up looking like this when I was done. As you can see, it's all bent up and caved in from me wailing on it. That's when I got the bright idea to get the engine hoist. I did try a jack. I um, figured it was just stuck on the fitting. I'd get a something to just pop it out. So I got the engine hoist on it, started pulling it out, figured, all right, I'll do the rest by hand. And needless to say, it is way too heavy. I cannot budge this thing even with both hands. Well, now it's getting a little bit better, but as you can see, we have a significant amount of hose out on the ground. 
last night I was up until 12:30 out here doing this pulling it about four foot up at a time um, then it just started it was like a monsoon out here and I said you know what the hell with this I'm done go to work tomorrow at least I can shower and all that at work it's not a big deal not having the water well it is a big deal but I can get by for a couple days this is what I kind of came up with to pull it like four foot at a time I have the engine hoist out here I was using it originally this is not like a one time thing it took me like a couple hours to even get this um, but basically we have a strap on the hose I pull it up with the winch on the four-wheeler which as you can see it is actually doing quite the number on my bumper uh, but we're gonna try and correct that this afternoon anyhow pull it up stop get another strap put it on the hose put my pipe wrench across the pipe lower it back down bring the hook back down with the winch and grab a hold and I got all this out by doing that needless to say I was not a very happy camper today uh, it was and I just I broke my ball so much I figured I'd bring you guys along for the ride at this point so the new plan of attack is I'm gonna straighten down all this hose so I can back Moby Dick up here I made this real quick today at work it is a winch we had laying around there that I borrowed piece of uh, tube stock I'm gonna just slide that in the hitch and use that instead of the four-wheeler because this thing was actually so difficult to pull up I actually had to lay across the front of the four-wheeler while coming up with the winch otherwise the front wheels of the four-wheeler would come off the ground and this is like an 800 pound four-wheeler so that's how much of a pain in the ass this has been so I know this isn't our normal kind of thing but once again figured I'd bring you guys along for the ride one more thing because I know people might have questions about it why didn't I just run everything through the pulley and just start driving with the four-wheeler well if you got too steep of an angle it would kink the, the tube and also once you got pulling on it it would try and pull the engine hoist right over so that just didn't work out and this is what I came up with Well, I got it all out. The well pump is out and there is just hose and wire all over the place. But anyhow, I got it out. I turned the breaker back on, hooked the wires up and the motor for the pump actually still works, which was surprising. It's a Gould pump. So from what I understand, it's a very good pump. Um, it is 17 year old, however, the well was put in in 01 so I assume it's original equipment but the I was told by a friend of my father's to check the splines which the splines on the motor and the female side on the pump both look good my thinking currently is that with 500 foot of hose 
what is it? It's uh, 0.433 uh, pounds of pressure per, per foot of head. So you're talking about 200, 200 to 250 pounds of pressure to get it up to ground level. So I'm thinking that the pump's just kind of laying down and not able to pump that. Um, when I hooked it up, some water did come out of the pitless fitting. Um, but it didn't come shooting out. It just kind of trickled out. That's what I'm thinking. Either way, I'm replacing the damn thing after all this work. So we're going to have a new well pump. Uh, I really don't know. Dad's got some feelers out to, you know, a couple people he knows just to see if maybe what I'm thinking is right. But there's no sinkhole in the driveway. So I don't think there's a leak between here and the house. And we have power out here. It should have been running. So that and if the motor's laying down to the point where, you know, it gets that water on it and it pumps up so far and then the motor can't spin because of the pressure. These are things I don't know. I'm sure some of you might have a clue, but uh, yeah, we'll pick this up tomorrow. I'm going to stretch this all out tonight. I'll stretch it out so it's easier to feed back in the hole. I'll figure out how I'm going to exactly go about that. And uh, yeah. Hopefully we'll get some water tomorrow and I can get a shower at home. All right, so it is now day two. Well, day two with you guys, but day three for me of our little well project. We got, got our new pump here. It is a Gould pump. It is the same as the one that came out. It, it lasted 17 years the first time. So here, hopefully it'll last at least another 17. Um, I was just informed by my father that a friend of his actually recommended some check valves maybe go with different style pump but this one lasted 17 years i got one already by the time i had heard from him and i want to have water back so maybe if it goes again you know in 10 years or whatever we'll look getting a different pump but this one should suffice for now so got the new pump it is all wired up taped up I also put our rope back on it, but the rope to me was kind of just, I guess, in case your hose broke. So I got this stainless cable. There is three or four crimps on here and the stainless cable. The idea is I can pull the stainless cable out separately and the hose can kind of flop around where I want it. Um, if you try and run the hose through the pulley or whatever it's going to kink and you gotta watch your angles if you just let it kind of come out naturally it'll spread out and you can stop and readjust it or if you have help they can keep running it out for you so that's my thinking so it goes through this pulley which will then send it down the um, pipe then it goes all the way over to that tree and back here to here so i have a whole spool of this stainless cable and i have our winch so the idea is i have a shackle on here to kind of lock that um, cable in place so i actually pulled a bunch of slack out so i can start by lowering the thing in by hand and kind of get the slack out of it uh, i can put it in and get it taunt on the spool and the winch or on the winch rather not the spool but then i can run the winch out until i'm out of either winch or space with the tree i can dog it off here reset our winch and just keep going in these what 50 foot increments or whatever so it should take it should take a whole lot less time than it did to pull it out at least that's my hope um this is not anything i found online this is kind of my own little device creation idea and uh we're gonna see how it works is it the best way to do it probably not i'm sure some of you got some better ideas but uh this is what we're gonna do we're gonna give her a go and uh yeah, let's see if we can have water tonight and get a shower at the house. So we're at the home stretch. I ended up not needing the winch and the cable to hold back as I was putting it down. I guess not having the weight of the water in the pipe. Well, 
I don't guess, I know, not having the weight of the water in the pipe and gravity helping us, obviously, I was able to control it going down. Um, I tied it off here because I did check the wire out beforehand and I had a couple slices up here. The insulation was nicked on all three wires right here and that was from when I first pulled it out and trying to figure that all out. So I heat trunk them, then taped them with the electrical tape uh, three or four times. I put our new pitless adapter O-ring in. So once we get that close, we'll throw a little Vaseline on that to lube it up. I got our handle on, so if we get close, we don't lose it. But yeah, we just have this last little bit of hose to go. Get this thing untied off, get her in there, get her wired up, and uh, hopefully we'll have water for a shower tonight. It's not that I haven't been showering, I've just been showering at work, so. Well, we're all wired up. Um, got all our connections made. I have a little loop crimped in there, so if we ever have to pull it out again, just use our stainless cable. Let all our hose flop wherever we need, you know, wherever it may be. I got the stainless cable coming out right next to this electric cable, so that way our cap should fit on. And then I have a clove hitch around there, and then just another loop. So we should be able to slide that off no problem once we take the weight. Moment of truth. Man, I hope this works. Well, we got flow here. Oh yeah, buddy. We got flow. Oh yeah. Water in the garage. Yeah, buddy. All right, now we can wash some trucks because Caitlin is absolutely filthy. Well, our, uh, <laughs> well, kind of a deep subject in our case. Well, anyway, well, again, so anyhow, our well project is done. I got the cap on. All that's really left to do is clean up all this shit. And of course, get my fake rock back installed on top of my well cover so that way I don't have to look at it. But we have water back in the house again. Um, I know this was something different. I just figured it was such a pain in my ass. I'd bring you guys along and maybe, maybe somebody will get something out of it. Um, I had never done anything like this before. I really honestly would probably have called someone had the driveway not have been out. Since it was out, I just figured, oh, hell with it. I got to, you know, I got to get something done. I didn't know how many days it was going to be that I couldn't drive on the driveway. So I decided to do it myself. Uh, honestly, pain in the ass? Yes. Part of that was not having the correct setup, not knowing what I was doing. But now I have that stainless cable installed on here. So really all I have to do is put a pulley up and then I can pull it with either the four wheel or a winch and then have somebody else just, you know, bailing the cable over here, or not the cable, you know, putting the hose over here and getting that out of the way and it will come right out. But like I said, a learning experience, always good to know, it's always good to know new shit. And I did learn a lot, so that's a good thing. I can now take a shower, I can wash my hands, all the stupid shit that you always kind of just, man, eh, you don't think about. Um, but anyhow, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I know it was a lot different than what we normally do. Our next video should most certainly be, unless there's another incident or domestic issue like this, putting that bed on the race truck. Also, uh, Caitlin needs a hell of a bath from the last couple days of running through the 
not the field, but next to the field, like at their water runoff path. She is filthy. I mean, just look at these wheels. Disgusting. And this was not even like trying to tear anything up. I was taking my time, just trying to be easy, so I didn't tear anything up. But with the rainfall we've had lately, it just kind of happened because of the weight of the pickup truck. So, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe to the channel. We'll be getting back to the race truck and hopefully to the track here shortly. We had a little delay, but oh well. Get out in your garage. Get the wrench on your truck. Oh, if you got, you know, household shit you got to do, I guess that's okay too.